The biggest food company takeover in history is canned. Bovis Homes plummets thanks to compensation costs and the Greek Prime Minister heads to Brussels to talk debt. I'm Katie Pilbeam, you're watching the Daily FX European Market Outlook. Let's get to the markets. Well, we've got to remember that US markets are out of the pitch today for President's Day, so experiencing lighter volumes during the session. Uh, buyers are looking to continue Friday's bounce. The markets here in London have been struggling, a lot of that after Unilever shares opened about 8% lower after American food giant Kraft Heinz abandoned its proposed merger. So Unilever, which is most known for producing Marmite, said it rejected the offer from its rival as it saw no merit, either financial or strategic. Uh, well, the, the offer was worth about $143 billion. Shares, though, dropped more than 8% in early turnover, but still trading, as we can see just here. This is the situation as we've got it, 7.5% in negative territory, but still 4% higher than Friday's pre-bid level. Now, it would have been the biggest takeover in this sector's history. Let's move on and talk about other movers and shakers today because we've got Bovis Homes. It has announced its full year pre-tax profit dropped last year. Um, it announced a 3% fall in its pre-tax profits for the last year to £154.7 uh, million. Pounds. Now, the house builder uh, also announced its plans to build fewer homes this year. Well, as a consequence, we saw the share price plummet. We can see it's down about 10% now. Um, these levels have not been seen since late October last year. The company has had to set aside £7 million to compensate customers who were sold houses that were unfinished and had electrical and plumbing faults as well. Now, however, though, uh, revenue wasn't too bad. It was up 11% to £1.1 billion and the number of homes completed rose to 1% to 3,977. All right, let's move on and talk about one of the gainers of today because RBS it actually jumped. It's now nearly 7% up. That's after the bank scrapped plans to sell its Williams and Klein banking units. Now, RBS, which is still 73% owned by the UK taxpayer, was ordered to sell this network. It's made up of 314 branches, and it was part of a condition of its state bailout back in 2008. But the Treasury now has come to an agreement that they're no, no longer um, expected to do that. Now, I wanted to say that shares have actually recovered all of their Brexit losses and now trading at its highest level since January 2016. Analysts say the move opens the way for the bank to pay dividends going forward. Right, let's move up. I'm just going to get up a few of the euro crosses because there's a few... Um, stories coming out. I want to talk about this one from Italy. This came out over the weekend. It's the former Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi. He resigned, resigned from the ruling Democratic Party ahead of a general election expected this year. Now, as a response, Italian bond yields pushed higher as investors brace themselves for more political instability in Europe. Now, staying on European politics, the latest French election polls show that far-right leader Marine Le Pen, she's actually gaining on her opponents. French 10-year bond yields jumped eight basis points to an 11-month high of 1.13%. I'll just get up sterling euro as well. Let's check this one out. So Greece's finance minister, I want to talk about this one because he's on his way to Brussels for the meeting today of the Eurozone finance ministers. He's hoping to renegotiate this dead deadline. Now, according to the reports in the Greek newspapers, Athens will be expected to lower the tax-free income threshold and their pension scheme as well, which is often criticised for being too generous for a country in enormous debt. Now, last week, Greek, Greek's government spokesperson said that the country had exceeded its bailout targets for the primary surplus and stated that the country's position is for a deal without a single euro's worth of additional austerity measures. Meanwhile, the EU Commission President, Jean-Claude Ayanka, also attended the talks in Berlin, and he was speaking about the possibility of a political solution. And he said, bar a miracle, will there be a solution today? So the optimism isn't particularly high on that one. Uh, let's move on and talk about what is due for tomorrow. 
Uh, so Tuesday this is. We've got Australia's RBA meeting. It's the um, the minutes that are coming out. We're looking forward to uh, digging into those. Then we've got France's inflation rate as well. We've got France, Germany and EU services and manufacturing numbers. That's for February. And Britain will publish its public sector borrowing number as well. So we're looking forward to that. We could see some moves in sterling uh, potentially on the back of that. Uh, in the corporate world, we've got British Bank, HSBC. We've got all the big majors uh, coming up this week in terms of the British financial so be on guard for that and miners anglo-american and bhp billiton to report u.s retailers are in the spotlight walmart macy's and home depot as well so it's going to be a busy day and obviously wall street will be back open so if you are celebrating today i hope you're enjoying yourself and i'll be back same time tomorrow but before i let you go let's have a quick look and see what those numbers are up to as you can see, we have got gains across the board, although be it very modestly here in London and France, but Germany is up seven tenths of a percent as we gear up to two o'clock in the afternoon here in London.